perhaps it's not the most noble way to earn a living, but who would honestly say no to getting paid for doing absolutely nothing? Especially given the ludicrous demands on a wrestler's body, mind, and time. Can any of us honestly say we turned down an offer to earn our salary sitting home counting clouds? Don't lie now. With all that in mind, I am Gareth here from What Culture Wrestling, and here are 10 wrestlers WWE paid to do nothing. Number 10, Shawn Michaels. The body of Shawn Michaels' work is virtually unparalleled on the North American wrestling scene, with his magnificent second run miraculously managing to eclipse his phenomenal first. But perhaps the greatest work he ever did was the spell spent on the sidelines between 1998 and 2002. Chronic back injuries threatened to derail Michaels' career just as he was hitting his prime. After WrestleMania 15, the torch was passed to Steve Austin, though more accurately prized from a reluctant Shawn's hands, as the show stopper entered early retirement. Inactivity didn't stop Vince McMahon keeping his buddy on the payroll, who for the next four years would infrequently turn up on Raw in a hat. In 2002 though, despite living the life of Riley, Michaels peculiarly decided to step back between the ropes. But we're all glad that he did. Wouldn't have had the sight of him performing a superkick in a chef's hat otherwise. Number 9. Neville Neville had had more than enough when he finally stormed out of the October 9th, 2017 Monday Night Raw, with all the fire he'd been storming into matches with since turning heel the prior December. The man that gravity forgot had had a transcendent year as 205 Live's end-of-level boss. Routinely stealing pay-per-views and pre-shows with powerful encounters against a variety of opponents clearly glad to be sharing some of his bright spotlight. Typical of any WWE lightweight division, the Cruiserweight League was underserved regardless. Neville's feuds and defenses went largely unpromoted before and after the fact, most notably when his WrestleMania 33 kickoff clash with Austin Aries was booted from several versions of the DVD. He'd shown his value long before bailing on grounds of enormous creative frustration, and it was this reason Vince McMahon refused to let him back out into wrestling's wild. His contract was frozen within months of the dispute, before he was permitted to seek employment elsewhere in August 2018. And he hasn't done too badly in the years since deciding to give that elite alternative a try, has he? Number 8. Sting after evading WWE's tentacles for the better part of three decades, Sting, WCW's icon, and the last holdout from the Monday Night Wars, was finally caught in the company's dragnet in 2014. All it took was a deal which asked him to do a whole lot of nothing for a whole lot of something. With his aura firmly neutered following the obligatory introductory loss to Triple H, on his long-awaited debut at WrestleMania 31, the Stinger didn't make another WWE appearance until the following August. 175 days later, when he pretended to be a statue. In other words, he literally stood completely still for 10 minutes until he was unsheathed by a stupid surprise Seth Rollins. Three weeks later, in retaliation for being humiliated by a Covent Garden attraction, Rollins seriously injured Sting, seemingly ending his career. In just over a year and a half, WWE had managed to eke out four matches from the one legendary figure fans still wanted to see. Sting had been de-stung. He always was a fan of water sports, so it was entirely fitting the company had metaphorically peed on him before he eventually joined up with Tony Khan's company in 2020. Number 7. Hulk Hogan after WrestleMania 8, the Hulk Hogan balloon was set to burst. The Hulkster had been walking tall in WWE for the better part of a decade, but his inflated physique simply could not be let down quick enough to mask the burgeoning steroid scandal which threatened to sink Titan. A disastrous appearance on the Arsenio Hall show only screwed up the scrutiny, and it was decided that for the good of the company, Hogan would take a leave of absence. Effectively, WWE was shoving Hogan in a metaphorical cupboard, in the hope he'd more closely resemble a literal skeleton when he emerged. It wasn't an ideal solution. They were paying him for his hermitude, and when he made a return in 1993 ahead of WrestleMania, fans had already turned against him. Even with his punier physique, Hogan still managed to muscle his way into the main event. Another sabbatical followed after a defeat to Yokozuna, before Hogan eventually wriggled out of his contract to earn even more in Atlanta albeit with considerably more work. Number 6. Brock Lesnar 
In the 504 days Brock Lesnar clung onto the Universal title like a baby loris to its mother's back, he defended the belt on just 11 occasions. That's fewer than one per month, making a total mockery of WWE's 30-day stipulation, which is obviously entirely arbitrary anyway. It's not as though Brock was being paid to do literally nothing. Besides his sporadic title defenses, he did occasionally show up on Raw to do what could easily be achieved by a cardboard cutout. But as the top title holder, his absenteeism was conspicuous to such an extent, WWE made it into his gimmick, with the once impossible aim of making Roman Reigns popular. It did not work. Brock was simply made into a pariah for his parasitism. Number 5. The Ultimate Warrior in the weeks prior to SummerSlam 91, the Ultimate Warrior who was advertised for the MSG show's headline main event retreated to his hideaway in parts unknown. Frustrated with the lack of parity between his own remuneration and that of company megastar Hulk Hogan, Warrior demanded his salary be topped up to match his rival, and wouldn't work until he received satisfaction. Vince McMahon wasn't about to waste months of build for the pay-per-view, but nor was he going to let Warrior have him over a barrel. He acquiesced to the disgruntled grunter's demands in principle, just long enough so he could compete in SummerSlam's denouement, and then promptly slapped him with a suspension, but not without doling out a huge $75,000 payoff, effectively bogarding him until early 92. Number 4. Scott Steiner The most memorable thing about Scott Steiner's second WWE run was the peculiar pink thong he thought appropriate for one of his leaden-footed lummox fests opposite Triple H. Look at that bad boy! That physique was certainly impressive, if not a little concerning, but it alone wasn't enough to prop up a successful main event run for the slow as snail Steiner. Perhaps it was just too impressive for his equally muscled opponent. Steiner was surprisingly asked to undergo a pre-wellness steroid test, but refused unless his gym rival did the same. Hunter refused and coincidentally Big Popper Pump soon found himself tumbling down the card. He made his final appearance at Royal Rumble 2004, but was Zali kept on the payroll until that August, spitefully fired just as an injury limited his options elsewhere. Number 3. The Undertaker 2018 was a busy old year for The Undertaker. Other than his customary WrestleMania cameo, the dead man also sprung back to life to bury Rusev in the desert and faced off with Triple H down under in a match promised to be their last ever. Like their other last ever. Then there was that infamous crown jewel tag team car crash. Frankly, it was about time he pulled his finger out. After falling to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 33, Taker did a very dainty bit of in-ring folding, hinting at his retirement but not confirming it. The ambiguity allowed him to sit on the sidelines on a retainer for a whole year, a nonsensical Manhattan promo notwithstanding, before he was again exhumed for duty in New Orleans against John Cena. Undertaker's age and failing physical prowess stipulated a scarcity of appearances, but it was his longevity and loyalty rather than value that kept him on such a lucrative deal, before he ultimately called it a day in 2020 and started earning that legend's dollar. Rest in pennies, baby! Number 2. CM Punk Charles Montgomery Punk's acrimonious WWE exit became a very public affair. In January 2014, Punk was being vetted for a WrestleMania victory over Triple H in what he saw as a doggy prize, whilst Batista sauntered back into the company to take all the headlines. Absolutely sick of his lot, he took the proverbial ball home, with Vince McMahon later confirming he was on a sabbatical. The eventual AEW World Champions gap year was funded by his disapproving WWE parents. Though he was slapped with an initial two-month suspension for deserting the company, he continued to sit out of action until July, a month after announcing his retirement, presumably spending the time taking in UFC shows. For all the good that did him, now bring the boy home, Paul. Number 1. JTG JTG's last televised WWE match, an unedifying defeat at the hands or gloved hand of Santino Marella on a Superstars taping, came on the 16th of September 2013. He wasn't released from his WWE contract until the following June. By that point, the one-time partner in Crime Time's continued tenure had become something of a running joke. His WWE spell became an online meme, with message board tykes ironically questioning which would go on longer, JTG's employment or The Undertaker's streak. There was even a countdown clock tracking his days in work. 
In the end, the neighbor hoodie outlasted the Phenom's vaunted record by 67 days. Even JTG was in on the gag, though. On the day of his release, he posted a satirical tweet asking, Damn, why I pick up my phone? What a guy. He then eventually returned to the company in 2022, appearing alongside the late great Shad Gaspard's wife and son, as his heroic one-time tag partner was awarded that year's Warrior Award at the Hall of Fame. And that's our list. Know of any other wrestlers WWE paid to do nothing? Well, let us know all about them in the comments section right down below, and don't forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're down there. Also, if you like this sort of stuff, then please head on over to whatculture.com and find some more fantastic articles just like the one this video you're watching right now is based on. I've been Gareth from What Culture Wrestling. Thank you, as always, for sitting back and enjoying a bit of wrestling stuff with us today. Hopefully, we'll see you again soon, but in the meantime, be good to yourself. Bye-bye.